And good evening. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of the VRS Hero Program. And my name is George Partis. I'm your host. And tonight we are going to try to bring on a guest um, and we're going to try to talk about fishing. So one of the things that uh, I've noticed, and especially in the uh, veteran community, is <clears throat> people deal with their deal with relaxing in, in, in different fashions. So one of the things, and, and the reason for that is, you know, people are, are built different. There are people that, you know, they want to, um, um, you know, that they want to relax by, um, you know, you know, going into the woods, uh, you know, going um, camping. There are other people that want to relax by going fishing, other people by working out. So people are built differently. And one of the things that, that we have talked about before is that people need things to heal. Um, not everybody's going to heal the same way because not everybody got hurt the same way. And with that being said, I think one of the problems that you, that we have in today's, um, environment is that the, the approach to, um, therapy, everybody thinks it's a cookie cutter approach and it, it really isn't there there are many different ways of healing just like you know for example one of the the, the things that the va does and i, I want to point this out because it's you know the va is has some really good programs is they have round circle therapy where you know they people sit down together and they talk out their problems to a lot of people that works out very well um, you know, and other people don't do well in a group like that. And so, you know, you sit there and you go, well, wait a second. Um, if you are, you know, if you're going to go do that, are you, is that going to work for you? Not everything works for the same way. And, you know, so people wind up, you know, getting different results from the same thing. So, one of the guys that we have on the state, um, you know, that works with us is a guy by the name of Lance McWhorter. He's uh, runs ETX down in, in, in Texas and he's a great cook, wonderful cook. Um, you know, he, not a cook. I'm sorry. He's a chef that that's not even close to being what he does. He's a, a, an executive chef, but what he does is he professionally goes out and he does kayak fishing and, and it does a lot of good therapy. And one of the things that we, you know, we've noticed about this is that you, in order to heal, you have to make an effort. You, you have to take the effort to say, hey, look, you know, there's something wrong with me. Now, if you don't take the time to heal and if you don't get the, the time to um if you don't take some time to, to heal and to get better, the wounds that you've created are, you know, they're going to get infected and they're going to hurt. And, and that's one of the things that, that we, you know, that we had, you know, we try to address on, you know, with VRS. Now, one of the things that we, we are coming up with in the next couple months is we're going to partner with a company that is going to help veterans get um, their rating. And, you know, we're going to announce this here shortly, you know, that we're going to have a bigger announcement once they get, uh, you know, once we get the, you know, a little bit more of the details, um, you know, done. But the point to me that I'm, um, that I am covering is that we need to understand that therapy by itself is not enough. And one kind of therapy is, it's just not going to, it's just not going to cut it. So one of the things that you need to, to understand is that if somebody is getting help, regardless of the, the, the way that they're doing it, you need to um, have some grace. People are hurt out there. Um, I mean, one of the things that I've noticed is that um, as I've gotten older, there, are, you know, a lot of lifelong um, a lot of lifelong, uh, injuries have not healed and people are battling them now. And I think that that's one of the, you know, that is one of the problems that we have. 
So, and I will, I will tell you, you know, something that also that, that happens. Um, one of the things that bothers us and especially with, you know, with VRS is that Marines are the least likely group of any of the branches to go get help. They, they just will not go get help. And I don't know why that is. I mean, I don't know if it's because they, you know, we're, we're taught not to go get help, not to be, but um, Marines as a whole do not get, um, do not go and um, get, go out and ask for benefits. They just don't do that. And as a result of it, they wind up, um, they, um, they wind up not, you know, they, they, they just sit at home and, and they could get, you know, a, a 30% rating. If you just got 30% and, and that's not a lot of money. I mean, it's not a lot, you know, big thing. It's a, you know, bad knee. Um, you get $625 a month. And so that's, that's a car payment. And so people, and one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we talk about, you know, and why this is important is that if, if you don't, a lot of people think that if you go to apply to go get, um, to go get, uh, you know, benefits or to go get a rating that you're taking money off the table from somebody else and you're not, um, what you're doing is they have to now account for you in the, um, system. So if you have a hundred vets going out and getting, you know, therapy or, I mean, I'm sorry, 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 are, at, you know, going out and getting benefits, the, 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 the department of defense or whatever, however you want to say it, they have to budget for that. And so now, you know, if, if you had a million vets going out and getting you know, getting benefits, that's a billion dollars a month that goes right back into the economy. That That's the best stimulus package out there. And so, you know, we think that, you know, people are, um, you know, that, that it's not good, you know, that we think that we've been taught to think that if we go to the VA to get help, that we're taking the money away from other people. And that's not the case. What we're doing is we are, you earned that right, go out and, um, and ask for it. Um, but going back to what we're going to talk about tonight, and hopefully my guest is ready to come on because I'm, um, I was expecting them a little bit earlier. Um, but people do, you know, people use fishing as, as therapy. They go out on the lake and it's very relaxing. It's like 15 and you know, you, you watch the Saturday shows on fishing. It's like 15 minutes of fun packed into three hours. But the, the, the thing about it is it's relaxing. It takes you away from your phone. It takes you away from your, from electronics. It takes you away from things that normally um, you would be you know, you would be dealing with. And I think that that's something that, you know, people just do not, you know, take into account that, you know, sometime that, uh, that something as simple as fishing would, would have therapy. Uh, one of the things that they did earlier, and this was, you know, something that we, you know, we talk about before and that, it, that has happened is that they did a thing on equine therapy, horses, and how they would, take veterans out and have them, you know, go to, you know, go to, um, these, uh, you know, the stables or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it and the horse farms and they would have them ride horses. They, they then did a before and after MRI and they showed that the MRI, that the, the part of their brain that would make them relax gave them, um, it, it, it made them relax a lot more. So that's why I think that, you know, that's why I go and talk about getting therapy to, to some people lifting is therapeutic to other people. It is not. And I think that that's, um, you know, um, that's what people don't, you know, people, people aren't taught this. So there's a thing in here that, uh, there's a thing called dopamine and, with dopamine, it, it's a the reward chemical, and so if you want to release dopamine, you get it from eating food. That's why food is so addictive. Um, and the um, 
one of the things that we also have is called serotonin and serotonin is a mood stabilizer. Now, how do you release serotonin? Well, it's easy. You go on nature walks. Um, if you want to get, uh, you know, dopamine, having a bath, getting enough sleep, achieving a goal, eating food, endorphins is exercising. And that's a painkiller, laughing, listening to music. And one of the things that happens is, and, and I'll tell you this, is one of the things that happens when you listen to music is, or you watch a movie that you've seen 30 times. Why, why is that so comfortable to people? And then they watch a movie over and over again. And they're like, wow. The reason is you know what's going to happen. And there's a certain calmness with it. And that is one of the, the reasons behind it is that it brings you calm. It brings you, um, you know, what's going to happen. It's the same thing with a, with a song, you know, the, what the song is going to, you know, it, it, it ties into, you know, a certain point in your life and goes out and says, Hey, listen, this is, um, um, you know, this is going to relax me. But again, you know, you go back to, uh, this and and you know why is this important because we need to we need to heal we have a lot of people that are not healing out there and we're not doing anything for them um we have a lot of wounded people out there and they are not they are not going out there and doing anything to help themselves and the and part of it is because there's a stigma attached to getting therapy it is, I've never seen anything, I, I've never seen anything like it. It's, um, it is very, it, it is very sad that, you know, we, we don't have, uh, we don't have um, very much grace for other people. We don't have a lot of understanding for, for other, you know, for other people. And as a result of it, what happens is that people, you know, are injured and that, you know, we're, it, it just, it's, it's very sad. Um, I'm going to try to get my guest on real quick. So if you guys can hold on for one second, um, I'm going to make some adjustments and hopefully this works. So, um, just guys, uh, stay, uh, stay tuned. Hold on. I'm going to play our one commercial and we will be, I will be right back. Hold on. And we're back. Um, by the way, that was our VRS uh, MMA, which um, our MMA line, which we had our brand ambassadors on there, which is Pat Militich, uh, Kevin Randleman, and Mark Coleman. Um, that's one of the things we've been developing a little bit. And so for those that have um, you know been watching the station the last couple months, we've tried to bring on some new talent. And one of the things that we, um, we are bringing on is we... Um, we brought on Ron Ripley. We have a new, you know, like I said, if you guys haven't, uh, you know, been watching, we brought on a new, um, new show, uh, the Riplonians, which is Ron Ripley. Um, we have another show coming on with, uh, um, we had one show with, you know, we have Heather Clark. We had, you know, I am the veteran. And one of the things that we're trying to do in VRS is we're trying to expand the, the, you know, a different approach I, I mean you know a wider funnel of shows not just for you guys for I mean you know for us but for you so you have a little bit more time um you know variety and you know the, the one thing with uh, 
you know, like I said, I apologize. Uh, you know, this is one of my, be- this has not been one of my better shows because I was expecting a guest to come on and they are not um, available. So I'm kind of having to wing it and talk about other stuff. But again, it goes back to um, the, you know, you, you need to, to work on healing. You need to, and that's what, uh, why we started the hero program is that, um, to, we're going to start, um, we've held seminars with, with athletes. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to, to look at things differently, that not everything is going to, you know, not everything is going to, um, work out in your favor. And as a result of that, you're going to have, um, you're, you're going to have challenges out there. You're going to have strife. You're going to have times that you're going to feel dejected. And as a result of it, it's going to wear on you, um, regardless of what you're doing, whether you're, you know, you're, you know, you're competing, whether you're, um, you know, being in business and everything is important because you can't, um, you, you can't keep going down if you are down on a, um, yeah, um, actually, yeah, a, um, yeah, actually it is. Um, you know what? Uh, if you want to jump on, hold on. I will, um, uh, here, um, there's, um, uh, fishing in the dark. If you want to jump on there, I, I just shared you the link and you can, you can, you can feel free to jump on. Um, we'll, you know, we'll bring in a, uh, bring you on as a guest right now. Um, just click on that link and come on in. And so, um, uh, delete comment. Um, yeah, but just, you know, click on that and then, um, we can, you know, bring, bring you on board. Um, anyway, it, it is, uh, you know, we, we talk about, um, you know, different ways of, of healing. And like I said, the, you know, the, one of the problems that we do have is that people, you know, um, um, all right. How you doing, Eddie? Good, man. How's it going? Well, we had a guest lined up earlier and I, didn't have, I was expecting them to be on earlier and not to show up. So, um, and what we were talking about earlier, and I don't know if you heard part of the show, but, um, one of our hosts is, I mean, one of the guys associated is a guy named Hans Quarter, and we have a couple people that what they do is they, you know, they use fishing as a way to do therapy, uh-huh. and and so one of the things that uh, we, one of the things that we have noticed is that to some veterans, not all, I mean, you know, ther- you know, fishing outdoors is very therapeutic because. Mm-hmm. It, what it does is it releases, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, serotonin to, to some people and, and it, it helps them heal. So yes. tell me a little bit about your background. You're a veteran. Yes, sir. Uh, I was uh, 06 to 10, uh, 11 Bravo army infantry combat deployment. 08 to 09 we're supposed to do 18 months because of, uh, the Obama stop loss thing, all, all that, they cut our deployment down to 13 months. And I uh, got to come back home to a lo- lo- uh, lovely Fort Hood, Texas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I was in fourth ID. Um, we moved. I did the whole movement to uh, Fort Carson and then uh, eventually got out right before the Afghanistan deployment because of stop loss. I had that promote and stay in or get out. And I, having a newborn at the time, I decided to get out. Um. But I guess I'll kind of tell you about our organization. But uh, before I do that, I want to – what you just said right there about um, the outdoors and all that, man, that is so true. But the big thing is is what we try to do is teach people that an outlet can help you, and but this might not be your outlet. Right. And there's a lot of people – like one of the things we talk about, we have a guy from SF that's a W amputee that's coming on their state on our station to do a uh-huh. show about that. And he is, um, he does kayak fishing. Okay. 
And what they're doing is, you know, because he's a double amputee, he had a um, he got blown up in somewhere in Afghanistan. Um, and we have a I don't know if you're familiar with a guy named Todd Van Langen. I don't know if you're um, he shoot. He's with uh, he, familiar, but... he shoots for Beretta and he's been a guest on this network. Okay. He, um, and he's uh, he currently has a thirty six hundred and eighty yard shot. Um, for Beretta. So he, I mean, he, he's, uh, I mean, he was a sniper for, for CAG and um, I don't know how many, but he's got a bunch of kill. I mean, he's, uh, you know, but the point of it is going back to um, the, one of the guys in his group um, got uh, stepped on an IED in Mm -hmm. Afghanistan and, you know, wind up being a W amputee from the knee down. Um, and he was okay. talking about how, because he gets, he's able to go in a kayak and get into, you know, he can go out and fish. Um, mm-hmm. it, it is very therapeutic. And one of the things that we talk about in the VRS heroes program is the fact that there, there are different kinds of therapies. And one of the things that, you know, there's outdoor therapy, there's woodworking, there's yeah. lifting, um, you know, the people would want to do the Spartan run, <laughs> you know, um, and, so everybody cannot, you know, there's tattoo therapy. There's a group out there that w- would give veterans tattoos and help them. Um, they, they would do tattoo, you know, because it's therapeutic to them. Um, there's a guy that wore, you know, they got a breastplate uh, of his, you know, fallen comrades. And so everybody, everybody heals in different ways. And so what they were talking about was that, you know, there are people who want to do nature hikes. They want to do the gun runs. They, you know, they want to go shooting. Everybody heals yep. and everybody relaxes differently. So one of the things that we, we talk about is if it works for you, it works for you. You don't have to explain that to anybody. Mm-hmm. Hands down. That's a hundred percent. You couldn't have said it any better. Um, so I'll kind of tell you my, how fishing in the dark kind of came about. Uh, we actually lost more people to suicide in my unit than we did while we were in Iraq. And, uh, last, last person who did it, I kind of didn't, I didn't handle it well. And I had already kind of found fishing thanks to my, my wife, uh, was kind of saying, well, you know, you, you fish and you're a kid, you should do it again. You're just trying to get me to do something right. Other than sit and stew and drink. Um, so I got with my battle buddy, who's uh, the vice president of the organization, me and him actually both deployed together. And I said, how can we share this with people? And, uh, you know, trying to get a structure down and something that we're not copying what someone else did, because then that organization is probably already going to do it better than we did. So we're a little unique to where we do uh, one veteran a month and we take combat veterans with PTSD and we we go through everything in their life from do they have a job? Do they you know, have income? How's their family life doing? Um, what are their outlets? Do they have addiction issues? You know, are they having right. uh, job issues? We, we run through the whole gamut. Right. Um, and when we finally get everything together, we're like we take them out to any lake. We're in Texas. Any lake they want in central Texas. I take them out on my bass boat and I let them pick the lake. And if they've never fished, whatever, if they have fished. Um, we give them a bunch of gear that they get to keep and it's about six months worth of gear for them to, to have. So the idea of that is a, they can continue the outlet if it is an outlet for them or B it's, they can walk away. Like we're talking about knowing that there is and there are other outlets out there. Maybe this it's, maybe it's mountain biking, you know? Um, but our big thing is to be able to get them out on the water, understand that, you know, the peacefulness of it. And for some people, I know me, I'm, I'm an extremely competitive person. Right. Uh, and because of my disabilities, I can't compete the way I would like, you know, playing sports and stuff. So I'm able to, to compete in, you know, in bass fishing or in whatever it is. But it's, it, you know, it's just another outlet. And I mean, how about are your um, how about are your um, uh, your injuries right now? Uh, most of it, most of mine is just back issues from humping and, you know, PTSD. Right. And one of the things I, I was going to tell you about that is too, is that we're, um, we're partnering with a company, um, that is with an organization that is going to help vets get their rating. 
and that okay. is one of the, and we're going to start doing a show on the network about how to how to file for your rating and disability because um, one of the things is that we've noticed and especially and I, I covered this earlier before you came on there's a there's a thing in the I don't know a dynamic in the veteran community where that veterans think that if you go file for disability that you're taking money away from other other veterans and that's not yeah. a, the, the, um, what do you do is if you don't file that money go that money that they would allocate for your help goes back to the you know to the government and they go spend it on you know on on other social programs and so um, you know because they don't allocate that money for for they don't allocate those funds for help so yeah. you're you're doing a disservice by doing that. One hundred percent. And we actually have uh, partnered with the DAV, Disabled American Veterans, and um, we we walk our we walk the veterans through. That's one of the other things that we do. You know, um, veterans feel like say they got blown up and, you know, they have TBI, but they never got a rating for it. They got denied their claim. And that's something that really can weigh heavy on their PTSD because they're like, it, it's just another thing where they feel like they kind of got screwed over if you, for, you know, lack of a better way of saying that. So we really try to get in there and make sure that the veterans get everything they deserve. And we go through, you know, we have examples of buddy letters and we kind of, we walk them through the whole process and we've been very successful in helping veterans get the rating that they actually deserve. Right. And that's, um, and that's one of the things that we're going to start that we, we're starting is because a lot of the problems too, is that, and then, you know, afterwards we, you know, we can have a talk, um, as well. Maybe we could help you guys out. And, um, uh, what do you do as a career? What do what do you do as a career? I'm a normal... police officer. In 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 Texas? Yes, sir. There's a guy down there, and I can't remember. Um, we had him on the show before. Um, he does the the hunts, uh, the boar hunts down there. Um, oh, is and... it uh, black boar rifles? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Um, Good guy. <laughs> well, what was funny is that he takes veterans out. And he was saying that, you know, the, the boar, whatever you want to call it, the pig, the, the boar problem in Texas is oh. un unbelievable because, and okay. So boars are like sheep. They eat the, the, the plants down to the root where a cow will let the, you know, the, the top part of the plant. So if you see a boar infestation, it looks like agent orange went through an area and just mm -hmm. ate up everything. And they, they, they tear up the fields they, and they also kill other wildlife in the area yeah. where, you know, they, they don't leave anything behind. And so, you know, and a pig can give birth in like 65 days, a wild boar can. Mm -hmm. And they can, I can't remember how many, how many piglets they can have, but it is, it is a tone. It, Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, you know, two pigs can, you know, in less than a year can get, have like a thousand offspring. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's I mean, it, it, yeah it, it's and and so they have to literally go out and they you know they have to kill like a thousand a day of these things mm -hmm. or they you know um and the other thing is that in texas there's no and what part of texas are you in central texas i'm about uh hour north of austin okay um there's no natural p predators for pigs in texas None at all. It's just literally us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and we're in other states, like in Arkansas, they have the Razorbacks. But Arkansas mm -hmm. has wolves. I mean, they actually have um, other animals. Like in Ohio, they have, you know, um, in southern Ohio, they got boars. Yeah. They have them someplace. And, but in southern Ohio, they have mountain lions. They have, you know, they have cougars. They have, you know, wolves. And, and the wolves will go out and, and, you know, they'll eat them. Texas doesn't have wolves. They don't have, you know, it's not a natural predator there. So I think no. it's time, you know, I think it's maybe time to release the wolves. They, you know, they did that at Yellowstone and they wound up, uh, you know, they did that at Yellowstone and wound up being a pretty decent thing. You know, they changed yeah. the river. I guess the, the, only, the only caveat to that would be with this amount of, the amount of cattle that we have and, and calves that run around, you know, are they going to, are they going to go for the easy meal of a calf? Or are they going to go after that boar that, you know, might take them out? And I, and I think that's one of the big worries that we have. I mean, uh, we actually, I just, I just got back today. I was, uh, we rented a uh, 65 acre ranch up in Northeast Texas and the owners were like, did you guys bring rifles? 
I, we were like, I was like, no, I didn't know we were supposed to. He goes, oh man, I wish you did. He goes, we got like 30, 30 boars that had just destroyed our fencing there. All the areas where they graze is all messed up, you know, all around, all, all by the tanks and all that, or just, it's just they're just destroying the land. And it's just little things like that where you don't, you know, you don't think, but it's like they're putting holes in the fences and now the cows are getting out, you know, right. so it's, it's, it, they, they really well, there's a there's a place in in, in Lubbock, Texas, mm -hmm. that is um and Lubbock and I don't know how you guys pronounce it different, but I, Love I, it. I, huh? Love it. Fuck, fuck it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, and the other one is Kylene. Um, Kylene, yep. Kylene, whatever. <laughs> in regular English, they would um. So what they're saying is they have they the boars down there are getting bigger. They're not, they're, you know, that they've, they've actually, um, they're, they're like small heifers. I mean, usually yeah. they're, you know, a lot of the boars were like 40, you know, 40 pounds, 35 to 50 pounds. These ones are 60 to 70 and, oh, yeah. and they're just getting big and there's nothing that, you know, there's no natural predators down there. But what they did is that in Texas, like in, in, in the premium, um, Permian basin where, mm -hmm. They have plot maps, and what they were doing is they were running. You know, they they had grazing land. Like, uh, hey, I, you know what? You're right, John. I can't speak Texan. I speak Greek. We invented Texas. <laughs> um, but what they're doing is they had these these grazing lands, and what they and and correct me if I'm wrong because I like I said we had the guy on the show and he was explaining this to him that in the grazing land they'll put up a post and they run. Con, you know, concertina wire or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, you know, the wire that keeps the, the animals out and, uh -huh. they, and a guy will take, and one of the farmers will bring a, a semi full of cattle and it will just release them in the area to graze for a few days and then bring them back, yep. you know? And, 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 and so he was saying what they, what these things will do is they will burrow or they will just literally destroy the, the fence line and mm -hmm. they, you know, they and the guys they go out and the, you know, the cattle just destroys that. You know, they go out and destroy everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's what the actually the the rancher was talking about is. So he's got, you know, this is uh, he's got like sixty five acres, and the neighbor next to him runs, I don't know, like a hundred head of cattle. Well, they'll let the they'll let the cattle graze for you know two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. They'll get you know that way it's not over overgrazed, and then they'll move into another person's property. Well, you know, he was going over and showing me his fence. He goes, look, he goes, there's like five areas of fence I have to go through and, and redo. And it's just one of those things where you have to keep up with it. And then, like you said, with no natural predator, you're, you're literally just left to yourself with, you know, uh, an, an AR and, and trying to knock them out with, uh, you know, some night vision at night because they're, they're bed down during the day. It's, you're not going to really find them unless, you know. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and, it, and they are, they're, um, there, um, so the guy I was, it was called Sky, Sky Hunter Outfitters was the guy that we were, we okay. had on and he is in Commerce, Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, um, but you know, they go in and, and they, they go in a, in a helicopter and, and they will run <laughs> yeah. and they, I mean, and like I said, they, um, and the other thing is that too is that the you know the boars or whatever you know the, the you know they run in packs, so it's not like you got mm -hmm. one you know they're 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 pack animals and it, which is something else that is, is crazy about it. So um, let me ask you a question. So do you go to the now that uh, with the the fishing? Uh -huh. How often are you able to go out and fish? Myself, yeah. Uh, personally, I fish two day two times a week. I'll go out right. to a lake. I'm within within an hour of uh, probably six or seven different lakes. Now, in Texas, like in other states, do they give, um, like Virginia, I'll give you an example, Virginia and Ohio, they give you a discount. If you're a veteran, sometimes some places have free fishing, li game, what they call gaming licenses. Do they uh -huh. do that? Do they do that in Texas? So, so in Texas, we have this, it's called like the all-star combo pass. And what it is, if you're 60%, I think it's 60%, don't quote me, but it, I think it's 60% or higher, you get it free. And that's like, that has turkeys on it. It's got bucks. It's got uh, two other animals. You get those tags and you get a fishing license for freshwater and a fishing license for saltwater as well. 100% free, no cost to the veteran. 
So which, which, which is something we really push. How much, I mean, what would be a license normally? Uh, hundred something bucks, depending upon the tags you get. If you don't get that big combo, I mean, you're looking at maybe I think 40 bucks for a fishing license for the year. And that's just fishing. That doesn't include the salt water. Cause then you have your tags for your redfish and, and things like that. I, I don't have my wallet on me right now or I'd pull it out and I'd be able to give you a little bit more accurate right. uh, definition on that. But yeah, so the good thing about, about Texas is like, you know, like our Texas lottery, all of those proceeds go to veteran organizations. It doesn't like go into the government or anything like that. So all the, it, whatever's paid out, whatever is not one goes directly to Texas uh, veteran organizations, which is really cool. Yeah. And I got to tell you this, one of the things that uh, is really interesting that they're, you know, that they're talking about too, is that in Texas, um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things we talk about, and I don't know, you, you left out of Fort, Fort Hood? Uh, Fort Carson is when I, when I got out. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and one of the things that, uh, that people were talking about is that, um, that the, one of the other problems that we, that, you know, we encounter too, is that, and, and that we talk about, you know, we're about doing a, um, you know, the evaluation for vets is the fact that a lot of veterans get out and they chase the paycheck. Yes. And, and a problem is, so the, you know, I don't know the, I, I'll explain to you a little bit about what the, the VRS hero program is, is that we are showing veterans how to repurpose their lives. Okay. And then we take, what we do is we have this workbook and we take a wagon wheel approach, you know, your health, your well being, you know, your career, um, you know, your hobbies, your public service. And all of that ties together to to what you do because there's a lot of people that they get out and let's say, you know, there's some jobs that just don't translate over into the civilian world, and 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 part of it is too is that you know one of the reasons that do you know why um, and, and we've covered this a lot one of the reasons why you have so many military go into truck driving and go into police you know policing and you know and the prison system like you know, correction officers is because they'll hire them, yeah. you know, I, I mean, and, and not because they have a certain set of skills, but it's just that they'll, they'll hire veterans. But mm -hmm. when you talk about executive positions, it, you usually have to be a rank of major or above to get, you know, to get some of these executive positions, because most of the jobs in the military, um, like I, I forget what the number was, and the DoD publishes, and I didn't, I didn't think it was that high. But when you look into it, it, it it's like seventy-eight to eighty percent of all military jobs do not have a civilian equivalent. That's and that that's hard to come back to. I, and I, I'm sure you know people. I know tons of people that they're always searching for. You know, like you're talking about what their purpose is. What right. what's their what's their next thing that's you know, that's going to challenge them and, or where do they fit in, in the civilian, in the civilian world. And like you're saying, truck drivers, police officers, garbage men, you know, these jobs where it's, yeah, don't get me wrong. There's nothing taken away from these jobs at all. But when you're looking at getting into the upper echelons, it's like, you may be an E, you could have been an E6 or an E7 in charge of two, three, 400 people with multi-million dollars worth of responsibilities and then you get out and now all of a sudden you're just Joe Schmo on the street and you, you kind of lose your purpose. And then they don't know how to take what they've had and translate that into a resume and, and find a job that that equals to, you know. Right. And and one of the things is like I give you a, a, a job that you translates that people laugh at. You know, they, they laugh at while you're in the military. When you get out, it's, it's a high pay, a bulk fuel refueler. Mm. You know, they, you, they can go out and make, you know, like they can go and work at the, there's a guy that, you know, that he could, you can go work for uh, any of the oil companies delivering fuel and you make, you know, I don't know, 50, $60,000 a year, yeah. you know, and, you know, delivering gas to the gas stations. And, and we had a guy on the station one time. He's like, you know, people laughed at me, but I, you know, I, I, I left and, um, a uh, lot of family first out in that big world. Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of the other things that happens too is that, that, you know, certain jobs that are very technical in the military 
you get out in the, in, in the civilian world and th there's nothing like it, like combat controllers. You yeah. get out and, and there's no, you know, there's no, um, and a lot of, and, and so even if you leave out and you, you know, you had a job that was very technical and, you know, like a Ford observer or a calf scout, that's a very yeah. technical, you know, you, I mean, fourth ID has, um, is, is it the first of the th 302nd calf? What is it? I the, believe the, so. Yeah. Fourth ID has, hold on a second because, um, yeah, I don't want to mess that up. I, <laughs> I was um, first DCT, so we were just straight. We were, I was one two two infantry. Yeah, they have um, Fort Carson has a, a cavalry scout. I, I mean, I'm just, uh, but they had a, a cavalry scout unit that was, you know, they they were pretty good. But you know, even something as good of a, as something like that, you get out. What do you do? I mean, you know, you're not, um, yeah. and. Um, and a lot of the, th and that's one of the things that you, you have to get out and you have to repurpose what you're doing. And it's hard for a lot of people. Plus the other thing is you don't have the car camaraderie in no. most, you know, now you might, in, in, a, in, you know, in being a police officer, you might, you know, have the same kind of thing, but yeah. it's not, it's not the same. I mean, it, it's, you know, and the, you know, the, pro you know, the other problem is too, is that, um, you know, we've covered this on the show before, and I don't know if you're familiar with the with the suicide rates in the U.S. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with them, yes, sir. But one, you can go go ahead. Okay, last year, 1.4 million Americans tried to kill themselves. 1.4 million. Now, oh, it gets even it gets even worse. Out of out of those, roughly between 45 to 50 thousand were successful. That that's the that's the bet that's a CDC number, and, and that's a guess because some suicides do not look like suicides, like no. they're um, like people will drive off the road, just you know, give up the wheel, and they're you know they they're on an open road and they just drive into the, you know they you know they drive off and and mm -hmm. they, they that you know the CDC has you know what they call a predictive analysis of what they look like. Number two, that the average. If you if you take of exception of the gunshot, you know, like if you kill yourself, if you attempt suicide with a gun, mm -hmm. about eleven thousand people did that last year. They committed suicide with a gun, but the average the average person who commits suicide is is successful on his third attempt. If you fail, um, if you fail the first time. People will will try again. Usually, if somebody committed suicide absent of a firearm, it was on their third attempt, and that's something that we don't we we just don't cover. And so, yeah. you know, and you know, you take a look at and people like Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain who had money, oh. who, and Robin Williams. I, I forget what Robin Williams' net worth was when he died. But it was, yeah, I, I mean, it was over fifty million dollars. I mean, it was, um, and. You know, and, and so when he, so P, if people, um, yeah, it was, um, it, at his death, it was, um, it, it, his net worth was $50 million. And if somebody like, if somebody like that can commit suicide by hanging themselves, imagine the despair somebody that's an E3 or E4 got out that has no access to resources and how they mm -hmm. feel. So, it, I mean, it, it's important to bring, it's important to bring um, the awareness to, to veteran suicide, but is how do you fix it? Well, the, the the one thing that has been shown is to live a life with purpose, mm -hmm. and that that has been the one constant that has saved people from um, committing suicide. Uh, I cannot agree with you anymore. It I, I mean, I've been I've been very lucky enough to where, you know, they talk about when people that I love have, have given me a call on their worst nights. I've flown across country twice last year for that. That that day I was like, I'm in Florida. You know, I was in Florida the next day or I was in, uh, you know, Arizona the next day. And it's when you're talking about having that support system, um, you know, you had this group of guys, maybe it's, you know, you're in a small unit, maybe you have, you know, four guys, you're like an alert unit or something like that. Or maybe you're, a, you know, your big platoon and everybody was family in platoon. 
that's not there anymore. And then you don't want to appear weak. And right. so you don't, you don't reach out to people and it's, you don't want to be a part of that stigma that you can't handle life or that you're a failure now, even though you were some hot shot in the military that was fast tracking and, you know, going to be seven and seven. And it's like, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things trying to get over that stigma. And the only th- way to do that is just for honestly, people to talk about it instead right. of just, you know, being like, Oh, that's so sad. It's like, no, no, it's, it is sad but we can prevent this. We can talk about it, you know? And one of the other, and and one of the other things about when you're doing that is that one, the, the worst thing is in the, in a, in a military community. And and I don't know if you've seen this. I mean, er, and everybody's military experience is different. I was Mm -hmm. a dumb grunt. I was a 31. I was a, I, I I was a machine gunner. I didn't do any um, other. (laughs) Well, no, I mean, everybody's like, Oh, you know, you know, first I, I was a former Marine. So, and, but I was also in the, in the army reserve and I wrestled for the army team in 97. I wrestled for the Marine Corps team in 88. I went okay. into wrestle. I, I mean, that's what, um, but I, you know, there's like 35 green, there's 3,500 green berets and I've met every single one of them. And, uh, um, oh, awesome. yeah, I mean, it's just, no, I mean, it's a joke. I mean, it's like, it, it's, <laughs> we used to, we used to partner on the station with stolen valor. And, uh-huh. uh, and we used to out people. It just got out of it. it. There's so many of them anymore. You just can't keep up, but no, you can't. Um, but one of the things that, uh, that, you know, that happened is that, you know, people's military experiences are different. And so if you got PTSD, you could have survivor guilt. Survivor guilt is much different than TBI. Um, yeah. And TBI is much different than if you have, you know, which is called trauma shock, which is based on, you know, like if you're in a firefight that, you know, that's a much different, you know, than, you know, survivor guilt and, you know, everything is different. And, you know, the, the, the problem is that we don't, we think that uh, you could take a cookie cutter approach to, you know, PTSD and healing. And it's like, you know, and we hear the dumbest shit ever. All you need out is a night out in town. Really? Man, yeah. I never, I, you know, I wish I, I, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, we never thought of that, that, you know, and, and the one thing that we said is that if the, if the solution to your problem is at the end of the bottle, then your problem would be solved at the, after the first bottle. Yes, exactly. You know, and there, there's something that's really interesting about PTSD that they're starting to do research with that kind of blew my mind away. So um, one of my one of my buddies was saying, he goes, you know, you got all these CAD guys and all these SF guys. And, you know, their their the amount of, I guess, suicide rate there is, is not as high as the general army population. Obviously, it isn't because of the number situation. Right. Right. But they're trying to say, like, that a big part of the PTSD community now is where you have these guys that are doing 17 hour missions and it's consistent, you know, two, two days on three days on uh, in a row, then you do your CQ or your guard duty uh, at, at the gate. And then, you know, one day off and then you're back out for three days straight or two days straight, whatever, whatever the fob or cob is. So they could go three weeks, three months without taking any contact, but thinking for, you know, a 10 hour mission, I'm going to get sniped. And that's a lot of pressure on someone. So you have guys that maybe only got shot at once that have extremely severe PTSD because they were thinking they were going to get killed every day and it just never happened. But then you have like SF guys and, and, you know, CAG and all that where they got a plan. They know what they're going to do. They know they're going to get into a firefight. They're mentally prepared to go in and handle business instead of this constant worry. Uh, and, and, and being on extremely high alert instead of following a plan. And that's the, and so we covered that and I, and I'll tell you what we, it's called the Achilles versus the Odysseus, uh, hmm. you know? And so one of the things that happens is like, it, it's the difference between sw- I, I, and, and I'll cover this. It's the difference between predator and prey. So SWAT, I, I'll give you an example. We, you know, one of the programs that we deal with, we, we have Columbus SWAT and okay. we, and we have some of the officers um, talk to, you know, talk to some of our veterans about, you know, helping out or becoming, you know, um, police officers. So a police officer is reactive. So when you're out on a watch, mm-hmm. when you're, you know, when you're out on a, you know, you go out on your, you know, mid, mid watch, um, yeah. you know, I don't know, you guys are four, you know, from eight to four, four to eight, four to 12, that kind of watch. Yeah, we do four on, 10 yeah. off. 
10 hour shifts. Yeah. So if you're out on a patrol and you're a police officer, you're, re you're reactive. It's like mm -hmm. 15 minutes of fun packed into six hours. Yeah. But so you have to react to a certain, you know, you, you don't know whether the, if you're doing a felony car stop, you don't know if it's, you know, what, what's going on. You're, you're just reacting to the environment where mm -hmm. you take a look at CRT. Now, I don't know. Do you have CRT out in, where you're at? Yeah, we got a SWAT team. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. CRT is different. CRT is uh, community, the community response team. The, um, you have uh, SWAT, um, you have the dr drugs or CRT, you know, the drug squad. Oh, uh, well, Anyone? We, we, we kind of do. We got defunded $150 million, so we kind of lost all of our units. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, but, no, I, we have a narcotics unit, yes. Yeah, and so in, in Columbus, you have CRT, you have SWAT, and so CRT goes out and does nothing but drugs because mm – -hmm. um, and the other thing is they have this – you know, they have a bunch of uh, protective gear for meth labs because what, what, what has happened is um, – they had a a few a couple years ago a few years ago um they had a they did a dynamic entry to this house um got into a shootout got into a big fire and so they had to get these no you know they they're now um with nomex they're you know fireproof um and and it's funny because the the meth guys are um what has started happening in ohio and god bless them it, i mean if everybody if the meth heads would just take a regular job oh. and have the same ingenuity. Oh. They millionaires. Got, they'd be millionaires. They got <laughs> rolling. They got rolling meth labs now. Yep. And, and, it, yeah. And then what they do is they got Cooter and Billy Ray. Billy Ray will go get the drums. You know, they don't get the same. And they'll, they'll meet up somewhere. They'll make it. They'll cook it off. And then what happens is they leave all the stuff there after they cook it and they leave. Um, yeah. And then they, they, you know, they, they make them and then somebody has to go in there and clean up. Well, the reason for this. So I, what I'm saying is the reason I covered all this is they have a, a specific mission. They know where they're going to be at they're, they You know, and as a result, it's the same thing with CAG um, with the guys from uh, fifth group. And so Todd, the guy that I was telling you about, Todd Van Langen, that's been on there, his his group was a hundred killer group that they, they just they got high value targets and they went after them. They just said, okay, you know, we're going to get this guy out. Al, Al, Al we're going to, he's in this province. We're just, this is all our, our mission is going to do. As a result, they have less PSD, PTSD because mm -hmm. once their mission is over, they can stand down. Yeah. And then you take a look at, uh, you know, you take a look at some of the Ranger battalions, they had to go out and look for action or do security and they don't know what they're getting into, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, some of the QRF teams, they don't know what they're getting into. So the PTSD, because you're on high alert, you've got, you know, you've got dopamine dumps, you've got adrenaline dumps. Yep. And then all of a sudden you don't know what's going to go happen. And then you've got to then wind down. I mean, if yeah. you could only be out for, you know, for 10 hours and, you know, 10, 20 hours and you come back and, and you're still wired because there's, you know, the, you know, there's, there's no end to the mission. That's so, right. So, you know, the one thing that, you know, like I said, that, that you have to, to work on is at the end of that time, you've got to then um, go and say to people, Hey, look, you know, we might need you to, you know, to act a little bit different. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's and, and that's the problem, you know, that is, that's a problem that you have in the, in the veteran community. And one of the other things is in the veteran community, we fuck over each other like you and Bob believe the yeah. amount of the amount of, bro, you know, like, you know, hey, bro, vet, how you doing? Oh, OK. Hey, yeah. you know, and then you're you you want to think that you're doing something. We, one of the things that I, I, I say to people every day, um, I got to tell you a story. I have a friend of mine who was in Afghanistan. I literally had to babysit this motherfucker for a month because he was, I, I mean, and seriously, he was, he was that bad. I mean, I had to go over mm -hmm. every day to his house. Um, I used to go get him Krispy Kreme donuts and, and, and I would literally sit on the couch and, and hold his hand because he was on, he was on the edge. Yeah. One day. I, I say to him, I was like, hey, um, is your ex still fucking Jody? And 
he goes, <laughs> he goes, yeah, she is. What about it, fat man? I said, you know, you could take both of them out and all you'd have to do is be at the sixth floor of the VA unit eating banana pudding for a month and you'd be okay. And it just, <laughs> and it, 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 he finally started to get out of his fog, but everybody reacts different because, yeah. you know, the, the problem is that everybody's built different. Everybody is, you know, the way I relax is I get on, I get on the mat and do jujitsu. That's, mm-hmm. re- that's how I relax. Not everybody can do that. Um, no. And, you know, the, there's people out there that they want to relax. Um, one of the guys, uh, a friend of mine, Mike, he gets out there and he makes um, tables out of resin and wood with military themed tables. And a guy's an oh, expert. Awesome. I, I mean, man, if you see some of his work, I'm like, bro, that, that is, um, that is exceptional. But the, you know, the thing is not everybody can do that. And so I tell people, um, uh, you know, um, that I tell people find something you love, find a hobby that you can, you know, that you can stay with because I, again, and not every, you know, people are like, uh, not every hobby is, you, you you know, if you're hurt, you can't do every hobby. Yeah, you know, if you have limitations and disabilities, there's some things you're not going to be able to do. You know, and so I, I think that I think the the problem is with people is that they don't uh, they're not looking into. It's very hard to have empathy for others. I mean, sometimes if you're hurt yourself, it's hard for you to have empathy for others. Yeah, I, you know it. And I think that's when you're talking about like, hey, bro, how you doing? You know, the bro vet thing and all that. Like, hey, it is what, for some people that works out great. But, you know, the whole idea of. Sorry, it's windy. Someone in my garage <laughs> um, trying to, to look at and understand what. What's going to make it work for you and being able to be there. And it, it, it's a very hard thing to do. I know that's one of our biggest challenges is how every time I get on the phone and I talk to a veteran who puts an application in. It's, you know, is, is this the guy that likes cussing? Is this the, the girl that, you know, was, it, was she a PTSD from deployment? The, you know, is it, what, what makes them click? And that, that's the hard thing to find, I think, is because everyone is such individuals, even though we're all trained the same and molded into this box, when you get out, that box, it's Pandora's box. And you're just trying to, trying to pick up the pieces the best you can to help them kind of put stuff back together so that they can function properly. Right. So, and, and, and one of the, you know, and one of the problems is that too, is that you've got, you know, one of the, the things that, that, you know, we talk about too, is the fact that, um, you know, there, there, there are different ways of bringing um, awareness to you know, veteran suicide, but if you're going to bring awareness and do, if that's all you're going to do, then stay in that lane. But if you're going to solve the issue, then you better have, after you bring awareness to it, you better have some therapy to make it better. Yeah. And, um, that's kind of like, we really push going through the PTSD with the VA, what they do. We, we also, it's, that's not going to be for everyone. Just like, they're, they're actually the VA. I'm actually really impressed with the VA, what they've been doing the past couple of years. It used to be this kumbaya session where you got 10 people sit around and you, you talk about whatever it is, whatever it's, you know, it's group led, uh, led by a psychologist. And then, um, you know, I, I brought up a point that was like, well, what if the guy that doesn't want to talk to people or be in a group setting? Right. And they were like, oh, we actually have something for that. And then we also have for the guys that can't leave their house. Um, you know, we have something for them, like a Skype call. And I mean, this is full, this is this is a, this reminds me of a veteran that I'm still currently working on. It's been two and a half years since I was introduced to him. All this veteran does is go to school. He walks out of his house, walks a block to the school, picks up his kid, goes back during the day around eleven o'clock once a week. He'll go brave down here. We have H E B as our grocery store. He'll go to H E B. He gets everything on his list, goes back home, and that's it. He doesn't leave his house. He doesn't. He doesn't socialize. Nothing. And you know, that's just how he is and trying to figure out a way to, to help him that it's been taxing for me. I'm not going to lie. You know, you can, you can text, you can call, you know, everything like that, but you know, you don't want to go too far when you're dealing with someone who's having a lot of issues 
because you don't want to push them away. Right. You know, and, and be a, be a nag or a nemesis or, oh, this fucking guy's calling me again, you know, excuse my language, but, you know. Bro, we're Marines. I mean, this is Veterans Day. I mean, we, we curse yeah. more than, you know, drunken sailors on leave. Believe me. Oh, also, yeah. like, I have this, I have this I serve t-shirt on. I, I usually wear that kind of stuff. It's, I'm never like, oh, hey, I'm a veteran. Look at me. It's my little girl got it for me. And I just, I was working out and I was watching your show. And when you said you're, uh, you didn't have a guest, I was like, ah, shit, I can take a break. And <laughs> yeah, we, we had a, the we, we were supposed we were supposed to have one and and you know sometimes you know it you know the things get in the way sometimes but it, oh, it's yeah. uh and you know the thing about it is you know one of the things we do on this network we we give veterans access to social media that that's our, that's our main focus we want um we're bringing on a, a new show you're gonna laugh at this but our new show is we have a a, a veteran who's gay um, and is going to do gay book review, and <laughs> and <laughs> that, <laughs> and um, so we have you know we have I am the veteran, we have the bar, we have we have shows on every day, and so yeah. well you know um, I used to do a political show on here, but it just got to be too taxing because people just it it, it just was you know no one wanted you know no one wanted to politics just became so exhausting, and then oh yeah. I, and then I saw how they were not, you know, and I saw how we're not doing enough for the the veterans to heal, mm -hmm. you know, that we're not, um, you know, that we're not doing enough to, um, we're not doing enough to, to help veterans. You know, we're bringing, we're doing all things to, to, to bring awareness to the 22. Yeah. And so one of the shows that we brought on is called If You Drink. And um, basically, uh, the, you know, the, the girl that, uh, our, our female host is, and the premise of the show is if you're going to drink, go to the American Legion, go to the VFW where you have like-minded people to, to, to hang out with. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, we brought on, it's been very successful and she's traveling around the, the country doing yoga for veterans and that's helping as oh. well. And it, she, well, they call it America flex, but it, it's, you know, helping veterans heal. And that's one of the things that, you know, like I said, you've got to take a multifaceted approach to, to everything. You know, not one thing is, you know, the solution. Yeah, it's not like a, you know, a whatever, a wrench, a hammer and a screwdriver all in one tool. It's, you know, it's. Um, it it reminds when you said earlier about stolen valor and things like that, then you have that get thrown into it. You know, I've, I've had people come up to me and I'm not a person who names names or anything like that, but they're like, Hey man, I want to get to hundred percent. What do I need to do? And it's like, what do you mean you need to get to hundred percent? You either are, or you aren't right. You're either 10% or you're 10 or you're not, you know, it's that that's, that's something that frustrates me. It's because, you know, we eat our own and then you have that negative cloud about it, uh, uh, you know, that can be, and we don't want that to happen. We don't want a bunch of people trying to fake stuff because then the people who are faking it are ruining it for the people that actually need help. Right. You know, so. Well, and then, and then problem is too, is that, you know, there's a group that, you know, we, we, we were upset at a group. There's a group on Facebook that is taking a lot of grief because all they're doing is, is um rating churning you know they're going yeah. to, and they're and they're churning and, and they're and they're charging the veterans to do so yeah so you know they you know like if you if you go from um like say 60 per i i, I don't know which one is the hardest to get to it's like it, from 60 to 80 something like that it's there but they say that if you are um they take 10 percent of your claim after they help you which is insane Right. But but they're doing it and, and there's nothing illegal about it. So what we said is, you know, look, we're going to start a program here where we're going to help you get your rating. And then once you get your rating, you're done. I mean, you know, we'll you know that it, it, and it usually takes, you know, this this program is about six months. That's awesome. And if there's anything that I can do to help you for any of that, I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have people who are much smarter and more capable than I am. But anything I can do at all to help any veteran that you guys have that's going through anything with ratings or anything, I can help any way I can. I mean, it's, well, we'll once we off. stop, uh, we've got a, about a couple more minutes to broadcast. Um, okay. Once we end the broadcast just stay on and I can talk to you offline just, uh, okay. you know, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, we need to help each other in veterans and we need to not eat, eat, eat each other, you know, eat our young because that that's the thing. Um, and at the end of the day, like I said, we're going to wrap up, but if you're listening to this and you need help, reach out to us, reach out, you know, there, we'll put you in contact with service organizations with, you know, veteran. And we don't, what we don't want to do is, like I said, I'd rather listen to your story than go to your funeral. And it's, and that, that's the, you know, um, so with that, any, uh, Eddie, any final thoughts? I think, I think you said it right there. Um, I, I always say, Hey, don't be afraid to call somebody or check on somebody. It, it works both ways. And that that's sometimes that's all that you need. Right. You know? So with that being said, thank you for listening to VRS hero, the VRS uh, family of shows. And we will catch you tomorrow night with Ron Ripley and full metal jarhead. So we'll talk to you and just stay on, stay on for a second. And... Oh.